This is an educational DVD for sailors starting their adventure in the 420 International Class. Back in 1959, when Christian Mori designed the first 420, he was thinking of a lightweight boat which would be easy and cheap to manufacture. 50 years later, the 420 is the most popular double-handed dinghy at the ISAF Youth World Championships. Most 420 sailors move on to the Olympic sailing classes, and former 420 sailors are now world champions in many sailing classes, be it in fleet or match racing. In light winds, the most crucial things are the position of the skipper and the crew, and the trimming of the sails. First, the skipper has to say tack to initiate the procedure. The skipper heads up slowly, and the crew helps the boat to heel from windward by putting his weight on the boat's side. Both the skipper and the crew must generate the windward heel and cross over in absolute coordination. When the sailor sits down again, the rudder must be centred and the mainsail must be as close to the centre line of the boat as possible for completing the roll. After the tack, the skipper positions the traveller between his legs and immediately checks the leech of the mainsail for precise trimming. The crew is responsible for trimming the jib and the slack of the spinnaker sheets. Next, he also has to check the leech of the jib for fine trimming. To execute a perfect tack in low winds, the boat has to roll and heel as much as possible. Let's take a look at the boat track of a best practice tack from an aerial view. In order to improve your tacking, you should review the movements of the skipper and the crew from various angles. An extra tip for you, let the jib fill up with wind before releasing the leeward jib sheet. This will allow for faster rotation of the boat. Good tacking in low winds is of utmost importance, since the boat speed might reach zero during an incorrectly executed tack. The 3D animation gives us the opportunity to see a well executed tack. Notice how the boat speed is always positive, and that the boat is able to pick up speed shortly after the tack. Slow and rolling movements of absolute coordination are needed when jibing in low winds in order to sustain the boat's speed. The first moves of the skipper are to shout jibe, lower the centreboard slightly in order to avoid too much rolling, tighten the windward jib sheet and ease the leeward one. At the same time, the crew uncleats the windward spinnaker sheet and squares the kite, while the skipper positions the rudder between his legs to allow his hands to be free to grab both the spinnaker sheets. After the jibe, the skipper trims the leeward spinnaker sheet in the moment that the crew changes side of the spinnaker pole. Next, he inserts the windward spinnaker sheet inside the clam sheet.
The aerial view shows how the skipper squares the spinnaker in order for it to remain full for maximum speed during and after the jibe. Notice from the onboard view how the crew pumps the mainsail only once from the kicker to allow it to become full from the other side in order to accelerate the boat. As it can be seen from the speed graph, a good jibe should keep the boat running at the average downwind speed. Rounding the upwind mark to the downwind is a difficult manoeuvre and requires preparation especially from the crew. There are three different ways to do that. The first way is to approach the mark on starboard and hoist the spinnaker from the port side. In case that the spinnaker wasn't lowered in the port bag, the second way is for the crew to throw the spinnaker in front of the boat so that it is hoisted correctly on the leeward side. The third way, if you approach the mark on the port side, is to have the spinnaker hoisted about 70 centimetres, three boat lengths before reaching the mark. The skipper needs to bring his weight closer to the centre line to keep the boat from heeling, while the crew fixes the spinnaker pole in place. The skipper needs to hoist the spinnaker about 70 centimetres, three boat lengths, before rounding the mark. After the rounding, the skipper bears away by releasing the mainsail. The crew trims the windward spinnaker sheet and inserts it inside the clam cleat, while the skipper fully hoists the spinnaker and trims the leeward spinnaker sheet. After the hoisting, the skipper and the crew sit in opposite sides and the skipper gives the spinnaker sheet to the crew. The manoeuvre ends with the skipper trimming in the jib and pulls up the centreboard. Let's see how the rounding looks like from the aerial and the onboard views. Rounding the downwind mark is even harder work for the crew, he needs to have calculated the distance. Accurate timing and precise movements are of utmost importance. Before starting the manoeuvre, the skipper needs to lower the centreboard to reduce the boat drifting after the rounding and better control the boat's movement. The crew gives the leeward spinnaker sheet to the skipper while he removes the spinnaker pole from the hook by rotating it and placed it in the aft at the leeward side of the boat under the jib sheet. Immediately after, he lowers the spinnaker in three consecutive steps. Then it's time for both sailors to heel the boat to the leeward side and trim both sails while bringing the boat back upright. Depending on the course layout and their tactics, the sailors might need to execute the manoeuvre on the starboard tack when there is a downwind gate or they are about to round the mark. At the end of the rounding, the sailors must check that their spinnaker sheets have no slack and that the sail leeches are well trimmed.
rounding the windward mark to reaching is similar to a downwind rounding. The main difference is that after passing the mark, you should not bear away. The procedure should be finished within one boat length. Notice how fast this happens from the aerial view. crew needs to use his weight to make the boat heel from windward and trim in the windward spinnaker sheet. The skipper has to bear away and lift the centreboard higher. Upwind in low winds can be very tricky. One wrong move can reduce the boat speed fast, causing you to lose many meters until you regain it. The boat needs to be slightly heeling to leeward and the rudder needs to be centered in order not to cause any drag. The sailors need to avoid bringing their weight too far aft or too far forward, causing the bow to lift or dive respectively. A correctly balanced upwind should have the bass of the bow just touching the water surface. The crew has to position himself on the leeward side close to the base of the mast and the skipper has to position the traveller between his legs. The kicker needs to be loosely trimmed and the crew should mark the point where the jib's leech is slightly open for future reference. The sailors need to adjust the jib's cunningham so there will be horizontal wrinkles in the luff. The crew should not sit on the windward jib sheet because this will close the jib's leech and harm the boat's angle and speed. The sailors should always remember to check on their sails periodically to see if the leeches are well trimmed. The aerial view shows that the boat should always travel on a straight course to maintain maximum speed. Let's have a look at the upwind technique from various angles inside the boat. As it can be seen from the graph, the main goal of the sailors during an upwind leg in low winds is to maintain a stable speed, which is as much higher as possible. Reaching in low winds requires the crew to stay on the windward side, close to the breakwater, and the skipper on the leeward side of the boat, close to the main bridle bar. The skipper needs to remember to keep his head leeward from the boom in order to better control the heel of the boat. Again, the goal of the sailors is to keep a stable speed. Downwind needs the sails to be full at all times. In order to do that, the boat must be slightly heeled to leeward and any movement of the sailors needs to be extra smooth. The Cunningham should be completely loose, while the kicker and the outhaul needs to be slightly more tightened. The position of the spinnaker pole is critical because it squares the spinnaker for maximum pressure. The windward side should be made ready to luff 
by trimming the leeward sheet. The crew must hold both spinnaker sheets as gently as possible, feeling a slight tension in both of them. This tension is the one that keeps the spinnaker full and in power. The same principle applies to the skipper holding the main sheet after the ratchet block to avoid any penalty from the jury. The skipper must always remember to sit next to the spinnaker sheet block to allow it to move freely. When the crew needs to trim in the leeward spinnaker sheet, he has to be gentle with his movements. Let's have an aerial look on how a best practice downwind looks like. As you can see in the graph, the downwind needs to be as smooth as possible to prevent sudden changes in speed. While racing, an athlete must always be comfortable. So every one of us can make his own personal choices about clothing in the water. Here we are about to demonstrate some of the basic clothes in our opinion that the athlete should wear. For the skipper, what we must always have in mind is that we always have to wear shoes that have uh, anti-slipping uh, bottom. That is very necessary in order to avoid sliding in the boat that can really even injure us. For the main body, we recommend we recommend a light, short neoprene wetsuit, not to be over than one millimeter thick, in order for the skipper to be comfortable. The neoprene will keep us warm while the water is cold. As sailors, we must always take care about our protection from the sun. This is the most important thing for everybody. So. What we can do is that we can wear a long overtop shirt like this one so that it protects us from the dangerous sunlight. Also, we must never forget to have a strong sunblock for the face and for the body that is not covered. Also, we always have to wear hats and caps. It's always necessary, either like this one or a full hat. As we all know the weather can change very quickly, very, very, very quickly. So we cannot carry in the boat or wear with us a spray top. The spray top for the skipper is very, very important because when the water hits the boat, then it, it goes to the, to the legs of the crew and smashes into our body and face. So spray top can really save us from a lot of water and cold. So let's go at the cruise outfit now. First of all, it's very important and not the sleep shoes, so we feel very steady in the boat and always have the control. Afterwards, we should wear a very thin neoprene to keep us warm and also long that we will not injure our legs. It's very important to, feel always, to wear always long pads. As my skipper said, we should always be aware of the sun so we should always wear uh, long t-shirts so they can protect us from the dangerous sun. Talking about the upper body, we should always keep warm. Uh, a lot of water hits on us, so we usually wear those spray tops to keep us warm because when you're warm, you can think more fast. Our necessary cloth is of course the harness. Without this, you can't trapeze. So, don't forget it. Finally, very important for all positions in the boat, the life jacket, we should never forget that and always wear it, even slight wind or strong wind.
When the wind picks up, the major change in tacking is operating the trapeze. Again, the tack begins when the skipper says tack, and this must be done in between the waves in order for the boat not to lose speed. The skipper has to put the tiller next to his body, and the crew lifts himself from the trapeze hook, stretching the jib sheet at the same time. Then the crew gradually moves inside the boat, keeping the leeward jib sheet stretched. When the boat is head to the wind, the crew has to release the jib sheet when the jib is backwind and tighten the new leeward jib sheet. Quickly after this, the skipper has to hike out and the crew to move outside of the boat and hook himself onto the trapeze. After the completion of the tag, the sailors have to position their bodies at the right position in a synchronized manner. Let's see a best practice tag in medium winds from an aerial view. The onboard view can give us more info regarding some tacking technique details. Notice that during the tack, the crew needs to rotate his body when passing below the boom and to keep the jib sheet in the cleat in order to not risk releasing it during the process. The crew has to remember to bring the hook towards his body. The graph shows that a well-executed tack between the waves allows the boat to keep its speed during the tacking process. A well-executed jibe in medium winds should not reduce the speed of the boat. Slow and well-controlled movements are critical. The skipper needs to lower the centerboard in order to reduce the boat's rolling and the crew to release the windward jib sheet. Again, the crew has to help the mainsail change side by grabbing it from the kicker while the skipper positions the rudder between his legs. Then the skipper grabs both spinnaker sheets and squares the spinnaker in order to keep it full for maximum pressure and speed. The crew then has to trim the jib, put the spinnaker pole in place and the windward spinnaker sheet in the clam cleat. Let's see how a best practice jibe looks like from an aerial view. Notice the squaring of the spinnaker. The onboard views can help in understanding the jibe in depth. Before the jibe, the skipper needs to release the leeward jib sheet. After the jibe, remember to give the leeward spinnaker sheet to the crew while you both take your positions at the same time to control the boat's balance. The graph shows that well-performed jibes do not alter the speed of the boat in a noticeable way. When the winds pick up, the crew should always use his body to balance the boat by moving his weight towards the bow and the aft, depending on the waves and the speed of the boat. This will allow the base of the bow to barely touch the water surface in order to maximize speed. During the process, the crew has to trim the trapeze with his front hand. In order to trim the windward jib sheet, the crew has to insert it in the cleat with his back leg. Notice how you can use your body to go faster during upwind in medium winds when the Oscar flag allows it. The role of the skipper when the wind picks up is to keep the boat from heeling by using the rudder and the main sheet. Remember that when the wind picks up, the jib luff should have no wrinkles. Let's have a look at an aerial view of upwind in medium winds. 
remember to have a closer look at the onboard views to perfect your upwind skills. shows that the boat speed can never be absolutely stable because of the differences in wind speed and the waves. The role of the sailors is to prevent it from dropping too much. When the wind picks up, the crew has to hike out 100% of the time and the skipper needs to fix its position in or outside the boat depending on the wind speed. When the crew hikes out on the trapeze, the skipper has to remember to help the crew hook on the trapeze if the crew has no time to do it by himself. In order to maintain the front aft balance for maximum speed, the crew has to walk on the side of the boat as you can see. Remember that the crew also needs to continuously trim the spinnaker sheet to maximize speed. In between light and medium winds, the skipper might have to sit on the leeward side to better control the heeling of the boat. As you can see from the graph, the changes in reach speed are far lower since all the sails keep the boat speed much more stable. When the winds pick up in downwind sailing, the most important goal of the sailors is to reach planing conditions as fast and for as long as possible. The crew needs to control the spinnaker sheets by gently touching them. The skipper needs to do the same for the main sheet by feeling the tension on it. When the race committee allows for free pumping and ooching, the sailors have to engage in the process with the goal of planning most of the times. Remember to use heeling in order to steer the boat and not the rudder, which might reduce your speed. The graph shows how an increase in speed can be reached when planing. Notice the sharp increases and decreases in speed due to this fact. There are many interesting ways to learn how to sail the 420 and enjoy yourself. As you can see from the videos, the sailors tried to sail with their eyes closed to get the feel of the boat handling.
In order to get a better feeling of the trapeze and how safe it is to use, the crew can hike out upside down. You can also learn to sail the 420 by yourself. Tacking in strong winds is a difficult manoeuvre, especially because it might lead into a capsize. In essence, the sailors need to execute the same manoeuvre as in medium winds. Quicker tightening of the jib sheet and release from the cleat is necessary for the crew. During the tack, keep the jib sheet tight and release it before the jib start backwinding. The sailors need then to quickly hike out to balance the boat and fine trim the sails later. Notice what happens if the crew is not fast in releasing the leeward jib sheet. Remember to keep the boat away from heeling during the tack because this will reduce its speed. shows that a good tack in strong winds is a maneuver that reduces the speed of the boat very fast and for a short amount of time. When jibing in strong winds, healing should be avoided at all cost. First, the crew tensions the windward spinnaker sheet and delivers it to the skipper, who puts the rudder between his legs. Immediately after that, the crew releases the windward spinnaker sheet from the cleat, and the skipper jibes when the boat is at maximum speed. As in medium winds, the crew has to put the spinnaker pole and the windward spinnaker sheet in place and get the boat running. Remember to be extra careful with the jib, or else it will get tangled up, destroying the jibe and your sail. In extreme wind conditions, the skipper can maintain his position to better control the rudder and let the crew deliver him the spinnaker sheets after the jibe. Before the jibe, he has to trim in the main sheet and cleat it so as not to damage the shroud. As you can see from the graph, a good jibe will reduce the boat speed considerably for a small amount of time. However, the boat will not risk capsizing and will pick up speed quickly after that. In strong wind, safety is the most important thing. That applies also when going from upwind to downwind. The first step is for the crew to unhook himself from the trapeze while the skipper releases the kicker. Then the skipper puts the rudder between his legs and hoists the spinnaker while the crew puts the spinnaker pole to the top lift hook. The last move is for the crew to secure the windward spinnaker sheet in the clam cleat 
and for the skipper to deliver the leeward spinnaker sheet to the crew. The sailors need to sit in adjacent sides of the boat to keep a better balance. Let's see what can happen if the sailors lose their concentration. Rounding the leeward mark in strong winds needs careful preparation well in advance. The first move is for the skipper to lower the centerboard and put the rudder between his legs and for the crew to remove the spinnaker pole and position in the leeward back of the boat. The spinnaker needs to be fully lowered two boat lengths before the mark and the sailors ready to hike out after the rounding. The sheets are trimmed in while the sailors are hiking out and the skipper needs to remember to tighten in the kicker. Let's see the rounding from another angle. In this case, the skipper released the leeward spinnaker sheet completely because he came too near to the mark. Notice the concentration required during the rounding from the onboard views. In strong wind, the critical thing is to maintain the high speed of the reach without compromising safety. Firstly, the skipper needs to ease the main sheet and the crew needs to unhook himself from the trapeze and square the kite. This is probably the most dangerous and speedy maneuver in strong winds. The first move is for the skipper to release the kicker and the main sheet before the mark, while he moves into a hiking position close to the aft of the boat. Then the crew puts the spinnaker pole in place, and while the skipper is hoisting the spinnaker, the crew puts the windward spinnaker sheet in the clam cleat. Then the skipper gives the spinnaker sheet to the crew and they both go into hiking position while slowly heading up for optimum speed. Upwind is the most difficult point of sailing in strong winds. The skipper should use the rudder to avoid the waves and depower the mainsail in order to keep the boat planing with a slight heeling and max speed. The crew needs to be stretched out as far as possible to bring maximum moment to the boat. He might also need to pump with his body to help the helmsman keep the boat balanced. In cases of really strong winds, where the mainsail depowering is not enough to keep the boat going, the crew needs to also depower the jib. The skipper might need to raise the centerboard slightly. In order to help the depowering of the sails, the cunninghams of both the mainsail and the jib need to be as much trimmed as possible. The same goes for the outhaul and the opposite for the kicker. The skipper needs to be positioned further back from the traveller and the crew must also move further aft to help the boat plan. Have a look at the extreme speed you can reach if you master the upwind.
you can see from the graph, the speed in upwind sailing is not stable due to the waves and the wind strength changes. The goal of the sailors is to maintain a good average speed. The main goal in strong wind downwinds is to keep the boat planing as much as possible. Sometimes the wind is so strong that the sailors need to position themselves on the windward side to keep the boat flat. During planing, the skipper bears away and both the sailors pump their sails to reach maximum speed. Beware of diving the bow in the water. In order to keep that from happening, you must keep your weight as far back as possible. Have a look at the graph and notice how the speed drops and increases with planing. Due to the high speed of the reach, the sailors need to depower the sails and beware of capsizing. During the strong gust, they must ease the sails, bear away and head up by trimming in later on when the wind drops. During extreme gusts, the spinnaker needs to be let out completely. To set up your boat, you have to first take the covers off, being careful not to harm the boat in the process. The second step is to make sure that the ropes are untangled. Next, you need to fix the sheets on the sails and secure them well enough. The sails need to then be unfurled carefully.
Next, you can hoist the jib and you can insert the mainsail in the boom. Don't forget to put the battens in the mainsail. First step is to attach all the spreader spars to the mast. Notice that there are different holes to achieve different bend levels on the mast. And remember to attach the shock cords for safety. Before positioning the mast in place, you have to make sure that the hoisting lines are untangled. The mast has to be carefully placed on the base, placing its tip between the two metal pins. Finally, the standing rigging has to be inserted in the deck levers and the trapeze systems have to be adjusted in place with shock cords. The spinnaker string has to be tight enough to allow for quick release of the hooks and loose enough for the quick release system to be completely closed. Remember that you need to change the string frequently because it gets shorter with time. The most important thing regarding the boom preparation is to fit the kicker and the main sheet block at the right point. Moreover, it is very important to have a protective cover for the boom at the place where it intersects the standing rigging wires. During the Cunningham fitting, you must first fix the in-haul and mark the mast at different points to allow easier trimming in the water. Marks are also needed for the out-haul system. The kicker has to first be fitted in the base of the mast and then the top. Don't forget to mark it for easier trimming. Notice how the jib's cunningham is arranged in the front. There are many times when you need to tilt the boat to fix the jib high enough so that its foot is just touching the deck of the boat. Notice the proper way to do it in order to not harm your boat. The same thing might happen in the sea to make adjustments between the races. The skipper and the crew need to help each other in the process both before and after the capsize of the boat.
case that you capsize, you must quickly secure the baler and fully lower the centerboard. The crew has to grab the fully extended centerboard and start pulling it. When the boat is brought upright with a mast from the windward side, the skipper has to stay on this side to prevent the boat from capsizing again. A tip for you, the experienced crew might stay on the centerboard, dive with it and come from the other side. Stretching is one of the most important things for a sailor. Before and after racing and training, you must remember to always warm up your muscles in order to avoid injuries. <laughs>